In this segment, I'd like to talk about how diamonds can come through in times of need. About 20 years ago, I had a visit from an elderly lady who happened to be a customer of my grandfather's. After taking care of the business at hand, we got to talking about old times. She told me that before the war, her father, who was a doctor, had bought her and her sister each a two-carat diamond as a gift. Years later, after the war, she ended up selling the diamond she received from her father, and with the proceeds from the sale, she was able to purchase a complete set of furniture and wardrobe in preparation for her marriage. To this day, I remember her telling me how truly thankful she was for her father's gift. Looking at the history of diamond prices in Japan in the years before World War II, during the 1930s, her father most likely paid around 500 yen for a fine quality two carat diamond. After the war, sometime between 1945 and 1950, I believe that that same diamond would probably have sold for about 500,000 yen, or maybe even a bit more. This is an amazing thousandfold increase in price. And the first reaction would be to wonder, do diamonds really increase so much in price? In reality, though, the diamond's value was largely unchanged. But economic and social fluctuations, along with the effects of the war, caused the value of the currency itself to fall to somewhere between one five hundredth to one thousandth of its pre-war value. Over the long term, high-quality gemstones have an exceptional ability to hold their value, even through times of economic instability. I'm sure that many people realize that diamonds can be enjoyed as they are worn on a daily basis, and then, after many years, they can still come through like this in a big way in terms of value. Because Japan had enjoyed economic stability for many years following World War II, people here didn't give much thought to the subject of financial disaster. But with the recent Euro crisis, as well as concerns over Japan's national debt, we now see that there is much more talk about such issues. It is important for each of us to take such matters into consideration and to take steps to protect ourselves financially. In times of financial crisis, although we, of course, hope that it never comes to that, diamonds can come through as a stable form of wealth. Also, in times of natural disaster, a diamond ring can easily be slipped on before evacuating. Because they are a stable and portable form of wealth, diamonds can truly be a help in times of need. There's an old saying that wealth should be held in three forms with one-third in the form of gold and diamonds, one-third in real estate, and one-third in financial assets. I believe that this will continue to remain true in the future and that this is an important role that diamonds can play. In the next segment, I will discuss just what type of diamonds are suited for this purpose. For example, here is a two carat round brilliant cut diamond, and here is a ring set with a marquise cut diamond, also weighing about two carats, and here is a five carat emerald cut diamond ring. In our next discussion, I'd like to explore what kind of value each of these types of diamonds has.